We meet today once again to salute and honor another group of outstanding nationals of St. Lucia for the yeoman service to the country in various spheres. The awards are being made under the umbrella of the Order of St. Lucia, which is described as an order of chivalry, which was established in 1980 by Her Majesty King Queen Elizabeth. While the Queen is sovereign of the order and the Governor General is Chancellor, there is also established an awards committee to decide on eligible members of the order. Members of the committee include a chairman appointed by the Governor General after consultation with the Prime Minister and the leader of the opposition, the chairman of the Public Service Commission, the chairman of the Teaching Service Commission, the Commissioner of Police, and three persons representative of the general public appointed by the Governor General, of whom two shall or two are appointed on the advice of the Prime Minister and one on the advice of the Leader of the Opposition. The Committee Secretary is also appointed by the Governor General. The order may only be awarded to citizens of St. Lucia. Honorary awards may be made to persons other than citizens of St. Lucia and are made with the approval of the Sovereign on the advice of the Prime Minister. For night, Dame Commanders, appointments may only be awarded to no more than three persons every two years, and the number of living knights and dames shall not exceed 20 at any one time. Under the Order of St. Lucia, awards are made in seven categories. The Order of St. Lucia is a society of honor for the purpose of according recognition to citizens of St. Lucia and other persons for achievements, for acts of bravery, or for meritorious service. Ladies and gentlemen, I thought it necessary to give this background to the awards of St. Lucia, mainly to make the distinction between our national awards of the Order of St. Lucia and another set of awards made annually to St. Lucians and citizens of the Commonwealth to honor the birthday of the Queen. I shall also point out that the Order of St. Lucia awards are made annually in respect of our independence, hence the reason we are here at this time while we are celebrating the 41st anniversary of our independence. I'm not using the word celebrate lightly, given the tremendous burst of enthusiasm and public participation we have witnessed over the past few weeks that clearly demonstrates the passion and zeal that our people have as proud citizens of our independent nation. I have been given the honor and privilege of chairing the National Independence Award Committee. And on behalf of this committee, it is my pleasure to formally welcome you to this evening's ceremony. There is a line in a pledge of a once famous international organization, which had a chapter in St. Lucia many years ago, which says, and I quote, service to humanity is the best work of life, unquote. Indeed, in every country, there are people who are engaged in the delivery of various forms of service. For many, it is something of a calling or passion. It comes out as a desire to help others, to provide assistance, to make life better, or more fulfilling to those in need of a hand up. Service, whether paid for or given voluntarily, is a multidimensional undertaking that sometimes even involves giving one's life in serving humanity. It is also embedded in the admonition of one of the great commandments of Christ himself, that of loving our neighbors as ourselves. Our honorees today come from diverse fields, medicine, the public service, philanthropy, religion, the arts, entrepreneurship, youth, and community development, and even the productive sectors of our economy. Each has a legacy of service to community and country that, is some, that in some cases went beyond the call of duty. 
In most cases, this service was given voluntarily over many years, many, many years, and given freely without reward or reservation. Along with volunteers are other awardees who, even while giving paid service, gave it selflessly. Service that impacted the lives of thousands of our people, making life better for them and for their families. We are fortunate in St. Lucia that we continue to have in our midst people, men and women of that caliber. I know there is some concern in certain circles that try as we might, there will come a time when we will run out of these tall words because it will be difficult to replace them given the changing attitudes of people in these changing times. Personally, I do not subscribe to this notion. I believe in the humanity of our people, which has never wavered in my lifetime and which is unlikely to do so in the future. The fact that this ceremony is taking place in the midst of our independence anniversary celebrations is not accidental because it provides us with an opportunity to ponder on the responsibility that is ours to come together and take control of our collective destiny as a country. One aspect of that destiny is to celebrate and create a country where all who dwell therein becomes each other's keeper and put shoulders to the wheel to propel the country forward, empowering each other along the way to produce a nation where everyone finds solace and satisfaction. This is what independence rests upon us, and we must never shook or run away from that responsibility. We have heard it said before that while independence allowed us to enlarge our circle of friends in the world, giving us access to sources of assistance that we did not have before, the ultimate responsibility for developing our country is ours. So this evening's ceremony is the nation's way of thanking some of those who have answered the call to national service and have distinguished themselves in so doing. To them, we owe debts of gratitude that cannot be quantified or assessed in terms of dollars and cents, which mode of payment is really a fleeting reward here today and gone tomorrow. Our national awards are more prestigious because they reflect the thanks and deep appreciation of a grateful nation. I repeat, this cannot be bought with money. Honorees, I say to each and every one of you, on behalf of the National Awards Committee, that St. Lucia is proud of you for your long years of hard work, dedication, and exemplary service on her behalf and on behalf of her people. You are the equivalent of conquering soldiers, fighting against forces that conspire to retard our progress. You are true heroes of our independence. May God continue to bless you all. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you immensely for your indulgence. His Excellency, the Governor General, as Chancellor of the Order of St. Lucia, on the advice of the Prime Minister, has been pleased to make the following appointments to the Order of St. Lucia in respect of Independence Day 2020. The St. Lucia Cross, Dr. Jonathan Romel Daniel, for distinguished service in the field of medicine and national development. Mr. Joseph Anthony Francis Compton, for distinguished service in the field of national development. Mr. Philip McDermott, honorary, for distinguished service in the field of philanthropy to St. Lucia. The St. Lucia Medal of Honor Gold, Mr. Motilal Singh, for eminent service rendered in the field of education. Mr. Peter Josie, for eminent service rendered in the field of economics, agriculture, and youth development. Mr. Irvin Cuthbert John, for eminent service rendered in the field of community development. The St. Lucia Medal of Honor Silver, Ms. Temba Cadet for eminent service rendered in the field of youth development and voluntary service. Mr. Simon Descart, for eminent service rendered in the field of community development. The St. Lucia Medal of Merit Gold. Mr. Laurent Japier, for long and meritorious service in the field of anthropology and botany. Mr. Edison St. Aubin Joseph Gard, 
for long and meritorious service in the field of music. Mrs. Joyce Louisa Glass Destang, for long and meritorious service in the field of entrepreneurship. The St. Lucia Medal of Merit Silver, Miss Anna Zilma Polio, for long and meritorious service in the field of education, youth, and community development. Mrs. Angela Christine Samuel, for long and meritorious service in the field of arts and fashion. Mr. Athanasius Laborde, posthumously, for long and meritorious service in the field of creative arts. The St. Lucia Lepito Medal Gold, Mrs. Lucille Joseph, for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of culture and community development. Mrs. Lucille Fontenelle, for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of national development. Mr. Charles Popo, for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of culture and music. The St. Lucia Lepito Medal Silver, Mr. Benedict George Jabatiste, for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of religion. Ms. Crystal Mandy Charles, for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of youth development. National Service Cross, Mr. Dorian O'Brien, for rendering loyal and devoted service beneficial to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, the government and people of St. Lucia. National Service Medal, Mr. John Finley Leos, for outstanding and meritorious service to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, the government and people of St. Lucia. The Public Services Long Service Award. His Excellency the Governor General has been pleased to award the Public Services Long Service Medal in respect of Independence Day 2020 to the following persons. The St. Lucia Public Service, Mr. Hubert Frederick George James. The St. Lucia Teaching Service, Mrs. Fatiana Shalry Nelson. Mrs. Alet Anna Snack. Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Superintendent Anastasius Mason. Inspector Jane Norbert. St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, Ports Police. Inspector Michael Placid. Corporal Venicia Critchlow. St. Lucia Fire and Emergency Services, Station Officer David Nelson, Retired Station Officer Aloysius Christoph Harrison Bailey. St. Lucia Prison Service, Bodley Correctional Facility, Mr. Jim Anderson Williams and Mr. Cecil Jabatis. The St. Lucia Cross, Dr. Jonathan Romel Daniel, for distinguished service in the field of medicine and national development. Dr. Romel Daniel, St. Lucia's first cardiologist, has been working in the health sector for over 32 years. He has elevated the standard of cardio care by introducing echocardiography and temporary pacemaker insertions as standard procedures in the diagnosis and treatment of cardio ailments. He authored the first national protocols of care for hypertension and diabetes in 2006 and is a founder and long-standing executive member of the Heart, Lung, and Blood Foundation. Dr. Daniel is well recognized internationally in the field of cardiology and has contributed to improving standards of cardio care for Caribbean people through the Caribbean Cardio Society. He is a fellow of the European Society of Cardiology and a fellow of the American College of Cardiology. He was instrumental in the founding of Tapio Hospital and in the ongoing viability and sustainability of this critical St. Lucian institution, serving currently as the chairman of the hospital's board of medical associates. Dr. Daniel has been a member, a mentor to many of his colleagues, young and old. His personal development has been holistic. He is an avid reader of diverse literature genres and has developed a deep philosophical understanding of life and relationships, which has made him a great mentor. His physical fitness and discipline is shown by his status as a black belt martial artist. 
for his many years of distinguished and eminent contribution to the field of medicine, Dr. Jonathan Rommel Daniel is being awarded the Saint Lucia Cross. Mr. Joseph Anthony Francis Compton for distinguished service in the field of national development. Francis Compton is a name synonymous with social security or as it is commonly known in St. Lucia today, national insurance. He joined the Treasury Department of the Civil Service in 1960, and after three years, was transferred to the Ministry of Finance. In 1970, he returned from his studies in the UK to set up a social security system for St. Lucia. He headed the then National Provident Fund, which gave birth to the National Insurance Scheme in 1979, and today is known as the National Insurance Corporation. He was the first director of the NIS, a position he occupied from 1979 to 1997. He was later appointed chairperson of the National Insurance Board in 2007 and demitted office in 2009, bringing to a close a 39-year direct association with National Insurance. Although National Insurance in St. Lucia was not his brainchild, Mr. Compton made the idea a reality and nurtured the program for almost three decades from its embryonic stages into a financially sound and robust financial institution. His stewardship and subsequent influence have seen an initial loan of $30,000 transformed into a current portfolio of over $2 billion. The face of Castries was remodeled under Mr. Compton's chairmanship as the NIC and waterfront buildings were constructed. In 2000, the NIC proudly honored Mr. Compton by naming the building which houses its head office after him. Today, he receives the St. Lucia Cross for his exemplary and distinguished service of national importance. Mr. Francis Compton. Mr. Philip McDermott, Honorary. For distinguished service to St. Lucia in the field of philanthropy. Step a little bit to your right. Many nine-year-old boys dream of being a train driver or an astronaut and end up with a career in accountancy or health and safety management instead. Phil McDermott, a 51-year-old from Birmingham, has stayed truer to the dreams of his youth. When he was nine, he started collecting medals, and 42 years later, in 2012, he landed a contract to make 450,000 medals for the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. In 1988, bored by his career in information technology and emboldened by the government's enterprise allowance scheme, which gave entrepreneurs 40 euros a week to start a business, McDermott founded the Worcestershire Medal Service in his living room in Gold Cross Lane. In 2004, he bought Gladman and Norman, a well-established Birmingham factory, and started manufacturing his medals. In January 2008, his company became one of four to make OBE and MBE medals. 
Mr. McDermott is the sole producer of medals for St. Lucia's National Awards, namely the Order of National Hero, the Order of St. Lucia, and the Public Services Long Service Medal. In 2017, he donated a significant number of medals to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force Band in observance of its 70th anniversary. For his many years of distinguished service to St. Lucia, through his philanthropic programs and initiatives, Mr. Philip McDermott is being awarded the St. Lucia Cross on an honorary basis. St. Lucia Medal of Honor, Gold. Mr. Mortalal Singh, for eminent service rendered in the field of education. The name Mortalal Singh has been used synonymously with science education in St. Lucia for the past 19 years. Mr. Singh is undoubtedly one of the most passionate, talented, committed teachers of science in St. Lucia. He encouraged both students and teachers to engage in science education and learning to interact with science to become creative, innovative problem solvers. As a result of his passion, remarkable, success was, remarkable successes were made in St. Lucia over the past 19 years. In 2006, he established a national science fair in all schools, and in 2008, he introduced the National Science Quiz. He spearheaded the review of textbooks and curricula and ensured that all secondary schools had efficient science technicians. He has been a CXC examiner for biology from 1987 and St. Lucia's representative at many science workshops and conferences regionally and internationally. Mr. Singh is an ardent sports person and served as the principal secretary of the St. Lucia National Cricket Association. For over two decades of dedicated service to science education in St. Lucia, Mr. Motilal Singh is being honor, awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Honor, Gold. Mr. Peter Josie, for eminent service rendered in the field of economics, agriculture, and youth development. Peter Josie concurs with Sir Arthur Lewis that successful economic growth and development of third world countries emanate from education. As such, he has devoted much of his life to educating St. Lucians on various subjects. As an agricultural extension officer, he instructed the peasant farmers on ways to utilize and improve technologies in their practices. As a young politician, he inculcated into the minds of potential voters the need to exercise their political rights in an evolving democratic society. Peter Josie has served both, both an elected member and a senator in Parliament of St. Lucia. He also served on two occasions as Minister of Agriculture, where his crowning initiative was the establishment of the Land Reform Commission. Subsequent to his agricultural ministerial initiatives, he served as a member of the board of the Banana Development Company, now Winfresh. 
In preserving and expanding the marketing of St. Lucia and Windward Islands bananas, Mr. Josie has also contributed significantly to the documentation of the political historiography of St. Lucia in the publication of his book, Shattered Dreams. He continues to write on matters of local and regional importance with his entry into the reparations debates with two publications, Reparations Conference and The Shopping List. For his contribution in the field of economics, agriculture, and youth development, Mr. Pisa Josie is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Honor Gold. Mr. Irvin Cuthbert John, for eminent service rendered in the field of community development. Cuthbert Irvin John was associated with Saint Lu the St. Lucia Banana Growers Association for over 20 years as a pilot responsible for spraying the banana plantations. The spraying of bananas is a dangerous undertaking as the plane negotiates the mountains and weather flying at very low altitudes. Pilot John has crashed twice into the sea only to be rescued by local fishermen. In another instance, his plane became entangled in wires of the electrical grid. He was fortunate not to have gotten electrocuted or have crashed, as the aircraft was essentially fly a flying tank of combustibles, oil, and gasoline. One would have thought that after three near encounters with death, pilot John would have stopped spraying. But he was committed to St. Lucia and the contribution that Green Gold made to our development. He made it possible for rural youth to further their education, achieve their dreams, and build their dream homes. There are so many achievements that we can attribute to the success of our banana industry that we cannot forget who risked his life for it all. Having retired as a pilot, Irvin John worked with the Castries City Council for a period of 34 years. During that time, he held several top-level positions, including that of Mayor of Castries, 1978 and 1979. He was responsible for general upkeep, beautification, and san sanitation of the city and its environs. Being a man with an acute business acumen, he formed a close alliance with Colonial Life Insurance in which he held several positions. He was a dutiful, he was dutiful in educating the populace on the importance of insuring their homes and properties against natural and man-made disasters. Today, St. Lucia is proud to present the award of the St. Lucia Medal of Honor Gold to Mr. Irvin Cuthbert John for his extraordinary bravery and service in the field of community development. St. Lucia Medal of Honor, Silver. Miss Temba Cadet, for eminent service, rendered in the field of youth development and voluntary service. Temba Cadet is a 22-year-old autodidactic 
philanthropist, and entrepreneur working to make a difference in St. Lucia. From her teenage years at the St. Joseph's Convent Secondary School, she was an avid contributor to school life, serving on several clubs and organizing shows and events. At the Sarfa Lewis Community College, she stood as the bridge between students and teachers in a protest against deplorable conditions and lack of facilities at the institution. Her passion for advocacy was sparked as she became the public relations officer for the Division of Arts, Science, and General Studies. She was the performance recruiter for the Sarfa Lewis Community College Jazz Council soliciting the performance of St. Lucia's finest artists to serenade students throughout the charge. In February 2017, Temba launched Do Something Different, which is a voluntary organization to serve underprivileged students across the island. The motto, Give a Little, Help a Lot, represents the core beliefs of the organization to date. DSD has been able to donate school supplies to 250 students in 25 schools around the island and participates in activities such as Reading Month and Good Deeds Day. The organization started with three members and has grown to 23 with a new branch recently launched in Canada. Miss Cadet, Miss Cadet is a versatile young woman. In addition to managing the DSD, she is currently the deputy band leader, Carnival Band at Notting Hill Carnival in London. She recently launched her own makeup services under the name Maid, serving both St. Lucian and British clientele. She is a former Miss World St. Lucia and a Carnival Queen contestant. For her philanthropic activities, and selfless contribution to youth development and volunteerism, Ms. Temba Cadet is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Honor Silver. Mr. Simon Descartes, for eminent service rendered in the field of community development. Mr. Simon Bernays Descartes has been a farmer for almost 40 years, specializing in animal rearing and large scale cultivation and exploitation of bananas. A few years ago, he diversified into the farming of ground provisions, fruits, and vegetables. He even runs a small-scale market from his home in an attempt to provide affordable fruits and vegetables, vegetables for his community. His nickname, Mr. Big, suggests Mr. Descart is a leader and role model within his community. A respected employer, to many men and women, a source of both moral and financial support for persons in need. In 1983, Mr. Big made a very significant life decision to invest in multiple acres of farmland and to dedicate his life to making a significant contribution to the agricultural industry. Through this venture, he was able to provide employment opportunities for many young men and women, which led to the increased productivity in the community of Monrepo. Many of these employees have been inspired by Mr. Descartes and attempted to mirror the values and work ethics he consistently exhibited by entering into their own business ventures with his blessings. Despite having reached the age of retirement, his love for farming has not faded and it keeps him working arduously in the field. He has been able to find a balance between work and his spirituality, and he continues to be a well-respected, valued member of the St. Anne's Catholic Church. 
For many years of commitment service to agriculture, Mr. Simon Bunez Descart is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Honor Silver. We continue with the St. Lucia Medal of Merit, Gold. Mr. Laura Jopier. For long and meritorious service in the field of anthropology and botany. Laura Jomo Jopier became a Rastafarian in the 1970s when that movement began to take root in the Caribbean. He loves the relationship between people and plants, which was one of the things that drew him into the Rastafari movement, the idea of being a naturalist and living a simple life. One of his most significant contributions to this country is a botanical survey of St. Lucia that he conducted collecting, classifying, and taxonomizing the entire flora of the island. In his research, he discovered a few new species, one of which is named in his honor. He was featured in the TV documentary, Caribbean Cool, in 1991. He worked with the St. Lucia National Trust for nearly a decade as a botanist. Currently, he is the secretary of the St. Lucia Archaeological and Historical Society, organizing archaeological exhibitions island-wide and sensitizing St. Lucians about the island's rich and varied past. During Emancipation Week, Mr. Jopier delivers a series of lectures on the theme Jardin Creole, its relevance, pre- and post-emancipation. Similar lectures have also been delivered in Martinique, he has written extensively on the fauna and flora of the Caribbean, and four of his publications have been featured in international reports and magazines. For his long and meritorious service in the field of anthropology and botany, Mr. Laura Jopier is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Merit Gold. Mr. Edison Santoben Joseph Gard, for long and meritorious service in the field of music. Mr. Edison Gard may well be considered the author of St. Lucia's, sec of St. Lucia's second national anthem, St. Lucia Simply Beautiful. It is a song sung by St. Lucians all over the world with pride as it extols all the virtues and wondrous things for which St. Lucia is known. This song is one of four in which Mr. God sings lyrics that encapsulate the national motto, the land, the people, and the light. It has also been adopted in the repertoire of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force Band and is played as a march on parades. For the past 60 years, Mr. God has been a musician, songwriter, singer, folk folklorist, and dancer. At the age of 16, he learned to play the guitar, which has been his instrument of choice, playing with the bands Iconic, Quavers, Caribbean Rockers Combo, and the Hellenites St. Lucian Trio folk band. He firmly believes that folk music and dance should be taught in schools. As a member of the folk group, Les Danseurs Traditionnels du Cetlici, he took up the responsibility, along with other group members, to teach quadrille to students in the Denry district. In 1995, the Ministry of Education awarded him for his efforts. In 1995, there was also a growing interest in introducing calypso music in schools with the introduction of the junior calypso competition. Again, 
The Ministry of Education sought Mr. God's music expertise, and for five years, he assisted in coaching several up-and-coming musicians. The Ministry of Education presented Mr. God with yet another award for invaluable service to the development of Calypso education in schools from 1990 to 1995. For the generous contribution of his time and expertise in the field of music, Mr. Edison God is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Merit Gold. Mrs. Joyce Louisa Destang for long and meritorious service in the field of entrepreneurship. Joyce Destang, OBE, a former St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce Entrepreneur of the Year 2014, is the managing director of the Bay Gardens Resorts chain of hotels, as well as the co-owner of Stardust and Company Limited, and owner of several commercial and residential real estate properties, including the Providence Commercial Center. She's quite simply the most successful homegrown St. Lucian born hotel entrepreneur in St. Lucia's history, and easily the island's most successful female entrepreneur in any industry. Joyce and her husband and business partner, Desmond Estang, started from very humble beginnings. Both were teachers and civil servants, with Joyce teaching mathematics and geography at the St. Joseph's Convent Secondary School for 15 years. She retired from the teaching profession just before her 40th birthday and became a real estate investor. Soon after, she and her husband opened Stardust and Company Limited. A decade later, they diversified into the tourism industry and in 1994, opened the 45-room Bay Gardens Hotel. Today, the couple can boast of having a resort group of over 200 rooms, over four properties, and a water park. Through it all, Joyce has maintained a focus on her most important role of being a parent, raising three well-accomplished and successful children. She is a staunch Roman Catholic with high spiritual values and attributes, or, and attributes all her accomplishments to her faith in God. For her sterling contribution in the field of entrepreneurship, Mrs. Joyce Louisa Destang is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Merit Gold. St. Lucia Medal of Merit Silver. Miss Anna Zilma Polio, for long and meritorious service in the field of education, youth, and community development. Unfortunately, Miss Polio is not with us today, but she is represented by her son who will collect the medal on her behalf, but I will go ahead and read her citation. Miss Anna Zilma Polio, more affectionately known as Madeline, is from the community of Bellevue, Viewfort. Having joined the teaching staff of the Bellevue Combined School in 1977, she worked tirelessly to improve both the school's performance and its overall image and ambience. In 2004, she became the principal, and for the first time ever, the Bellevue Combined School was headed by a member of the same community. She implemented the Kitchen Garden Program, the Cross Age Tutoring Program, the Character Counts Program, Numeracy and Literacy Plans, Home Weekly Plans, and Home Visitation. Through collaboration with both local and overseas agencies, she established the Reading Room, a Learning Center, an Information Technology Lab, and a Lunchroom. Ms. Polio's contribution has not been limited to the school, 
but has also spread to the community. She was a catechism instructor in church, a community leader, a sports master, a spiritual leader, an adult literacy program coordinator, a cultural activist, president of the Bellevue Disaster Preparedness Committee, and a member of the board of directors of St. Jude Hospital. Her main interest is in agriculture, specializing in tree crop and cut flower production. She even tried her hands at livestock production at one point in her life. For the generous contribution of her time and dedicated service in the field of education, youth, and community development, Ms. Anna Zilma Polio is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Merit Silver. <laughs> Mrs. Angela Christine Samuel for long and meritorious service in the field of creative arts. Angela Christine Samuel is a multi-talented, award-winning St. Lucian artist who for the past 40 years has earned recognition for her impressive skills in different artistic genres. She's a retired teacher of theater arts from the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School. She has received much national acclaim for her work as a dancer, dance tutor, and choreographer. Today, Christine works under her Christy Creations brand, using her extensive artistic skills in the visual arts to produce original ladies' bags that reflect vibrant St. Lucian Caribbean artistry and beauty. The bags from Christie Creations are today attracting increasing local and regional attention. Over the last few years, she has showcased her wide variety of bag styles at the annual St. Lucia Taiwan Trade Exhibitions and in 2015 at the Hot Couture event of the St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival. In 2016, she participated in the regionally established Suriname Fashion Week, where she presented a 30-bag collection entitled Duo. She participated in the Caribbean Style and Cultural Awards and Fashion Showcase in 2018 at the Silver Spring Civic Center in Maryland in the United States. She re recently launched a new line of eclectic and beautiful bamboo jewelry that reflects a colorful Creole aesthetic, which enhances her already impressive portfolio in the local creative industry. For her significant contribution to the arts, Mrs. Angela Christine Samuel is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Merit Silver. Athanasius Laborde, posthumously, for long and meritorious service in the field of creative arts. Athanasius Laborde's academic qualifications were in mechanical engineering, but his interest, passion, and life belonged to the creative arts. While studying at the Boston College of Education in the UK, he profited the opportunity to learn Ghanaian, Nigerian, and Caribbean music and dance forms at the 4th International Dance Summer School in London. He joined the Kokuma Performing Arts, an Afro-Caribbean dance theatre company based in Birmingham, England, where he became drumming director. As a trained teacher and a master of the arts, he found creative ways of motivating students. He taught for a few years at the RC Boys Primary School, and then for 12 years at the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School. In 1985, he founded the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School Birdsong Steel Orchestra. He also facilitated a five-year program on drum building and percussion at the St. Lucia School of Music. Laborde was no doubt one of the best drummers in the Caribbean and had thrilling audience performances locally, regionally, and internationally. In 2003, he conceptualized, directed, and produced St. Lucia's hit musical, Caribbean Potpourri, The Journey, with a 35-member cast to Carafesta 8. 
Today, we pay tribute to Athanasius Laborde for having been the epitome of service to culture and having left an indelible mark on the art landscape of St. Lucia. The St. Lucia Medal of Merit Silver is being awarded posthumously, and his sister Norma Laborde will accept on his behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of the first part of the awards, and we invite His Excellency, Governor General, to come to the stage to present the medals. The Saint Lucia Cross, Dr. Jonathan Rommel Daniel, for distinguished service in the field of medicine and national development. The St. Lucia Cross is also awarded to Mr. Joseph Anthony Francis Compton for distinguished service in the field of national development. The St. Lucia Cross Honorary to Mr. Philip McDermott for distinguished service in the field of philanthropy to St. Lucia. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. St. Lucia Medal of Honor Gold, Mr. Motilal Singh, for eminent service rendered in the field of education, especially science. The St. Lucia Medal of Honor Gold, awarded to Mr. Peter Josie, for eminent service rendered in the field of economics, agriculture, and youth development. The St. Lucia Medal of Honor Gold awarded to Mr. Irvin Cuthbert John for eminent service rendered in the field of community development. The St. Lucia Medal of Honor Silver, awarded to Ms. Temba Cadet for eminent service rendered in the field of youth development and voluntary service. The St. Lucia Medal of Honor Silver awarded to Mr. Simon Descart for eminent service rendered in the field of community development. The 
St. Lucia Medal of Merit Gold awarded to Mr. Laurent Jean-Pierre for long and meritorious service in the field of anthropology and botany. The St. Lucia Medal of Merit Gold awarded to Mr. Edison Joseph Gard for long and meritorious service in the field of music. St. Lucia Medal of Merit Gold awarded to Mrs. Joyce Louisa Glass Destang for long and meritorious service in the field of entrepreneurship. St. Lucia Medal of Merit Silver, Miss Anna Zilma Polio for long and meritorious service in the field of education, youth, and community development. We invite her son, Kevin President, to accept on her behalf. <laughs> St. Lucia Medal of Merit Silver is awarded to Mrs. Angela Christine Samuel for long and meritorious service in the field of arts and fashion. St. Lucia Medal of Merit Silver awarded to Mr. Athanasius Laborde posthumously for long and meritorious service in the field of creative arts. His sister, Norma Laborde, is accepting on his behalf. This concludes the first part of our investiture ceremony. I now hand you back over to our mistress of ceremonies. And we invite you to listen to the St. Lucia L'Epitor Medal Awards and continue with the Public Services Long Service Medal Awards.
We continue with the order of St. Lucia Awards. St. Lucia Lepitor Medal, Gold. Miss Lucille Joseph. For long and meritorious service in the field of culture and community development. Mrs. Lucille Joseph hails from the community of Denia Riviere, Mabuya Valley, where she helped develop the La Maguit Flower Festival. For the past 40 years, she has been one of the rocks upon La Maguit Festival has survived and been sustained in her community. Mrs. Joseph served in many different administrative and advisory capacities. Her organizational skills and passion for the Flower Festival have been tapped into by neighboring schools as she helped prepare students for the national celebratory activities. During the period when the numbers in the group had dwindled to the point of inactivity, she embarked upon a massive recruitment drive which resulted in the initiation of very young children into the festival. She resorted to her personal resources to provide for her group, as well as pay dues for members who could not always meet their financial obligations for national celebrations. For long and meritorious service in the field of culture and community development, Mrs. Lucille Joseph is being awarded the St. Lucia Lepitor Medal Gold. Miss Lucille Fontenelle for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of national development. Today, a stenographer with the ease of technology can record audio and video and play back for correction or check accuracy at his or her own convenience. The proceedings of parliament. This was not the case for Mrs. Lucille Fontenelle, who was one of the first stenographers employed by the Parliament of St. Lucia. She was responsible for recording every word uttered using shorthand with a keen, sharp air and an astute sense of context. This painstaking work could, could have only been undertaken by a person who was dedicated and patient. Mrs. Lucille Fontenelle joined the St. Lucia Civil Service when Sir George Charles was the chief minister and remained in the service for over 40 years. She operated on the strict code of punctuality, respect for authority, accuracy, confidentiality, and pride. She worked very long hours ensuring that the history of St. Lucia through the minds, words, and decisions of its parliamentarians were correctly recorded. Mr. Cletus Springer, who served as a permanent secretary in the recent Facebook posts about Mrs. Fontenelle noted, Mrs. Fontenelle was an exceptional public servant who took great pride in her work. Few know of the hard work she put in to serve our country from embarrassment during independence celebrations in 1979. She was among the few who did not join strike actions and worked tirelessly in the days and nights leading up to the event to ensure all went smoothly. For the generous contribution of her time and expertise in the service of Parliament of St. Lucia, Mrs. Luc Mrs. Lucille Fontenelle is being awarded the St. Lucia Lepitor Medal, Gold.
Mr. Charles Popo, for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of culture and music. Charles Popo began his working career in 1968 as a messenger at Radio Caribbean International. He was consistently being warned for spending too much time in the studio instead of being in the front office where his employment position required him to be. He was a fast learner and quickly picked up on the technical aspects of the station's operations. By the time a vacancy opened up for the position of technical operator, Popo had absorbed enough to be considered eligible. His interest in broadcasting, especially in Creole, was sparked when he assisted Mr. Eric Branford in recording a weekly 15-minute show called Culture Corner. When he was given the opportunity to voice announcements in Creole, Popo was then given an opportunity by Hunter J. Fassois, then the executive chairman of Radio St. Lucia, to produce music features, translate news from English, prepare and record commercials and public service announcements, conduct interviews and host discussions in Creole. But it was the magnetic vibes of the traditional Creole culture of St. Lucia that mesmerized Charles Popo. He immersed himself in La Woz, La Maguit, Solo Seunal, Abagoj for nearly 20 years. He traversed the island to record Creole folk music. It would not be surprising to know that the current attention being spotlighted by the Denry segment is as a result of the producers of this new genre of music hearing solo music so frequently played by Charles Popo. In 1980, Popo was honored by the St. Lucia Media Workers Association for Best Creole Program for his broadcast of poems in Creole by St. Lucian authors. In 2017, he received a legacy award from the organizers for the Creole Music Competition for promoting our Creole heritage through radio and broadcasting. And today, He's been presented with the St. Lucia L'Epitor Medal Gold for dedication and exemplary service in the field of culture and music. St. Lucia L'Epitor Medal Silver. Reverend Benedict George Jabatis, for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of religion. Reverend Benedict Jabatis, better known as Pastor Ben, has been a minister of religion for the past 40 years, serving the spiritual, social, moral, and emotional needs of St. Lucians. He is among the first group of pastors to preach the gospel via the television, starting as early as 1983 with his television program, Dayspring. After 36 years, Dayspring is still impacting the lives of St. Lucians. Pastor Ben's contribution is not limited to his church's congregation. He has conducted many inspiring and motivating school assemblies at various secondary schools in St. Lucia. On two occasions, he has been invited by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force to counsel at-risk young people at the annual summer camp. In 2006, he organized the 1,000-man march under the theme Promoting Family Values, where hundreds of men from various walks of life participated. He was the deputy chair of the committee appointed by the government to establish a policy for faith-based organizations and a member of the Criminal Record Rehabilitation of Offenders Board. 
for his contribution to religion, Reverend Benedict George Jabatis is being awarded the St. Lucia Lepito Medal, Silver. Miss Crystal Mandy Charles, for having performed a long and meritorious service in the field of youth development. In an era where youth development, sorry, where youth involvement in groups and organizations is on the decline, and discipline and moral values among the youth are at an all-time low, the community of Mondador is fortunate to have Miss Crystal Mandy Charles to rise above all odds and take up the mantle of leading the Scouts movement. She has devoted nine years to the Scouts movement and makes it her duty to organize activities for the beavers and cubs, keeping them occupied and ensuring that they are well-rounded citizens. Her commitment and dedication to the organization is remarkable, and the parents and guardians of the cubs and beavers are genuinely appreciative of her devotion. For nine years of selfless service to youth development, Ms. Crystal Mandy Charles is being awarded the St. Lucia Lepito Medal, Silver. The National Service Cross, Mr. Dorian O'Brien. For rendering loyal and devoted service beneficial to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, the government and the people of St. Lucia. Mr. Dorian O'Brien joined the Royal St. Lucia Police Force in 1988 and has been attached to several units of the force. During his tenure as head of the Special Services Unit, he revamped its operations, increasing the presence of the unit in centralized areas and broadening their response procedures. His departments also achieved above 90% detection rates in crime reported at the police stations, maritime patrols, and increased foot and mobile patrols across the divisions. Deputy O'Brien served as the commander of the regional security services on two occasions after the passage of Hurricane Maria. For his exemplary performance, he was awarded the RSS Cross by the regional security services. Deputy O'Brien served as the president of the board of directors of the Royal St. Lucia Police and Allied Services Credit Union for several years, giving sound financial advice and direction to the institution. For his eminent service to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, the government and people of St. Lucia, Deputy Commissioner of Police Dorian O'Brien is being awarded the National Service Cross. National Service Medal. Mr. John Finley Leos for outstanding and meritorious service to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, the government and people of St. Lucia. Mr. Finley Leos enlisted in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force in 1988 and has since worked at the Central Police Station and Police Marine Unit. At the Marine Unit, where he spent most of his service years, he served as a vessel commander, navigating both locally and regionally. He was this unit's Amos Stores officer, and he organized several training sessions for staff. Under his leadership, 
the unit was able to repair their vessels, resulting in enormous savings for the force. He spearheaded many drugs, drug seizures and water-based operations throughout the years, leading to the heightened security across our borders. Despite having suffered departures from health, Mr. Leos remained committed to his duties. His credible service has made his name synonymous with the Marine unit and deservingly so. For 32 years of outstanding service to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, the government and people of St. Lucia, Mr. Finley Leos is being awarded the National Service Medal. Unfortunately, Mr. Finley is unable to be with us here today. His son, his son, Mr. Leos, will receive the award in his absence. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite His Excellency, the Governor General, to join us one more time to conclude the Order of Service Awards to our final set of recipients before we move on to the Public Service Awards. Receiving the St. Lucia Lepitor Medal Gold is Mrs. Lucille Joseph for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of culture and community development. And now we present the St. Lucia Lepitum Medal Gold to Mrs. Lucille Fontenelle for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of national development. I cannot allow Lucille to go without my telling you my association with her. In the first place, her husband, Fontenelle, was in the same form with me at St. Mary's College. And she worked in the parliament while I was there, all for almost all my life, I would say, because I've been in politics for, for 50 years. And while my brother was attorney general, she was the stenographer in the Attorney General's office. And that girl is so accurate, so devoted. You could call her at any time. She would be there. And I don't know what we should do for her more. There must be more that we should do for her. I just wanted to say that because Lucille has been like a sister, you know? Thank you. Thank you for that special touch, Your Excellency. We now invite, we make sure I get it right. For the Lepitor Medal Gold, Mr. Charles Popo, for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of culture and music. The St. Lucia Lepito Medal Silver is being awarded to Mr. Benedict George Jabatis, also known as Pastor Ben, for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of religion.
as it was, and the spirit to God gave. The St. Lucia Lepito Medal Silver is also being awarded to Miss Crystal Mandy Charles for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of youth development. The National Service Cross is being awarded to Mr. Dorian O'Brien for rendering loyal and devoted service beneficial to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, the government and people of St. Lucia. The National Service Medal has been awarded to Mr. John Finley Leos for outstanding and meritorious service to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, the government and people of St. Lucia. His son, Amani Leos, is accepting on his behalf. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. We have come to the end of the investiture ceremony for the Order of St. Lucia, having presented the St. Lucia Cross, the St. Lucia Medal of Honor, the St. Lucia Medal of Merit, the St. Lucia Lepito Medal, the National Service Cross, and the National Service Medal. Continuing with the Public Service Awards, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Superintendent Anas Anastas Mason, Anastasius Mason, enlisted in the Royal Anastasius Mason, Anastasius, sorry, Anastasius Mason. This is a very St. Lucian name. Anastasius Mason enlisted in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force in 1985. He has served in every unit or department during his career. The majority of his service was within the Crime Management Unit. He acted in the position of Assistant Commissioner of Police in charge of crime management, which he performed with a high level of professionalism. Superintendent Mason is perhaps even equally known for his contribution to the development of sports within the police service, particularly in the field of cricket. As the chairman of the cricket committee for several years, he organized the group's participation in tournaments across the region, retaining the championships in 2017. For 45 years of dedicated service to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Superintendent, I'm going to stick again, Anastasia Mason is being awarded the Public Service so Public Services Long Service Medal. <laughs> Inspector Norbert joined the Royal St. Lucia Police Force in 1985 and underwent her initial police training at the Regional Police Training Center in Barbados. She has a wealth of experience, gained from attending many training workshops and working in several departments. In 2018, Inspector Norbert 
was commanded, commended sorry, for her effective leadership, efficient, efficient management, and supervision of information technology unit, and her superb administration of Kaiso headquarters, the Police Week celebrations. She is presently the president of the Royal St. Lucia Police Allied Services Cooperative Credit Union. For 35 years of outstanding service to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Inspector Jane Norbert is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Service Long Service Medal. The St. Lucia Public Service Long Service Medal. The St. Lucia Public Service, Mr. Herbert Frederick George James. Hubert James. Career in public service began in 1971 at the Treasury Department of the Ministry of Finance. He has since worked at the Ministry of Agriculture, Registry of Civil Status, Office of the National Liaison Officer, and the Department of Labor from where he retired. Mr. James spearheaded and successfully managed metrification project which oversaw St. Lucia's transition from imperial measurement to scientific metric system of measurement from 2008 to 2013. He is the founder of the St. Lucia Cancer Society and co-founder of CARE Vocational School. He was instrumental in institutionalizing the National Consumer Association and served as the vice president and president for eight and 10 years, respectively. For 49 years of committed service to the public service, Mr. Hubert James is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Service Long Service Medal. <laughs> The St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Medal, the St. Lucia Teaching Service, Mrs. Fatiana Charlery Nelson. Mrs. Fatiana Shalry Nelson began her teaching career in 1976 at the Tiroche Miku Combined School. Having served as a general education teacher for many years and after completing certification in early childhood screening at Michael University College, she accepted the challenge to become the special needs teacher at her school. She became passionate about providing quality instruct instruction since she believed that every child can achieve. Her dedication and commitment to the job allowed her to become a trained assistant service provider, ASP, with a special education unit, as well as a screener for pre-kindergarten students. She began and ended her career as an educator at the Tiroche Miku Combined School, where she served as a teacher and teacher in charge for 43 years. For more than four decades of dedicated service in the field of education, Mrs. Fatiana Charlery Nelson is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Medal. <clears throat> Staying in the teaching service, we now invite Mrs. Arlette Anna Snack.
Mrs. Olet Snack's career in teaching began in 1968 at the Miku Infant School. In 1970, she was transferred to the Miku Junior Secondary School, where she taught mathematics and English language, and in the same year, to the Sufra Junior Secondary School. Since then, Mrs. Snack has taught mathematics at the Kashri's Comprehensive, Corinth, and the St. Mary's College Secondary Schools. In 1998, Mrs. Snack made a career change from class teacher to principal and served in that post for nine years at the R.C. Boys Infant and at the Bocage Secondary Schools. After her retirement, she continued to make her contribution to the education system and became a part-time teacher in the teaching of mathematics at the secondary level at the Bonterre Private School. Consistent with her character to serve, she accepted the challenge of being the principal of Tapio Private School. In addition to being a successful and dedicated educator, Mrs. Snack volunteered as the faculty advisor of the St. Mary's College Key Club, helped with the St. Lucie's Home Annual Dinner, assisted the St. Benedict's Roman Catholic Church with its after-school program, volunteered at the Boys Training Center, and gave voluntary assistance to the grade six students of the Marshall Combined School. For 49 years of meritorious service in the field of education, Mrs. Arlette Snack is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Medal. We move on to the St. Lucia Ports Police. Corporal Venetia Krishlu. Corporal Venetia Krishlu enlisted in the Ports Police Department in 1989 and was subsequently trained at the St. Lucia Police Academy. She has received extensive training in international civil aviation, maritime security, and coxswain certification, which she skillfully applies in the execution of her daily policing duties. She was promoted to the rank of corporal in 2007 and continues to exhibit tremendous professional growth during her tenure. She remains flexible yet resolute, amplifying the highest values of the Ports Police Department. For her 30 years of service to the St. Lucia Ports Police, Corporal Venetia Krishnu is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Long Services Medal. <laughs> Inspector Michael Placid. <laughs> Inspector Michael Placid joined the Port Police Department in 1987 and was assigned to the Viewfort Seaport. He was transferred to the Uranora Airport in 1993 upon his promotion to the rank of Corporal. In 2003, he was promoted to the rank of Sergeant and was assigned to duties as Lead Prosecutor Investigator. He has obtained certification in several disciplines relating to general policing and aviation. As a trained aviation maritime security instructor, Mr. Placid has been actively involved in the internal training of the port police and other security outfits involved in the dispensation of security services. Also, he was instrumental in the drafting and review of the airport security program and other security resource documents, as well as the development of standard operating procedures for the port police. 
Port Police Inspector Michael Placid is being awarded the Public Services Long Service Medal for his long and exemplary service to the Port Police. The St. Lucia Fire Service, David Nelson. David Nelson enlisted in the St. Lucia Fire Service in 1987 and was assigned to your Uranura Fire Station. In 1999, he was promoted to the rank of leading fireman and was reassigned to the Fire Service Training School as an inspector. His promotion to the rank of subordinate officer came in 2010, and thereafter he was assigned to the Aerodrome Fire Station. In 2016, he was reassigned to Sufre Fire Station to serve his hometown, where he assumed the role of station commander to this day. As a young firefighter, he was very disciplined and took pride in his physical fitness. He had a keen passion for soccer and his skills quickly grew over the years. He was selected to represent St. Lucia from 1990 to 1995 on the senior national football team. For his dedication and 32 years of service, station officer David Nelson is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Service Long Service Medal. <laughs> Aloysius Christoph Harrison Bailey. Aloysius Bailey enlisted in the St. Lucia Fire Service in 1981 and was assigned to the fire post at Sir George F. L. Charles Airport. He received a baptism by fire during his first week when Guyana Airways D6 crash landed and burst into flames. Indeed, this incident was a very unprecedented way of experiencing one's first fire as a fire officer. However, this incident provided him with the extraordinary breadth of experience to draw from, one that would decorate his distinguished tenure. Bailey was very ambitious and carried himself with great pride and respect as a junior officer. He was the epitome of an efficient officer who challenged the status quo and often developed simplified approaches to achieve everyday tasks. He revolutionized other departments within the fire service by providing more result-oriented solutions to old processes. He served with distinction, and his initiatives are still held in high regard due to their revolutionary impact. For 32 years of unbroken service to the fire service, Mr. Aloysius Bailey is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Service Long Service Medal. The St. Lucia Prison Service. Mr. Jim Anderson William. Mr. Jim William joined Her Majesty's prison as an office assistant in 1998 and was promoted to prison officer during that same year. Since then, he has participated in numerous work-related training courses locally and regionally that improved his skills and qualifications. 
Over the years, Mr. William gradually moved up the ranks and in 2019 was promoted to his present position as operations manager. As a devoted and dedicated officer, Mr. William has risen above the many challenges and difficulties that have confronted the department and serves as a mentor to the recruits and a motivator to his colleagues. In 2016, he served as the president of the Correctional Services Welfare Association and worked tirelessly to ensure there was an amicable relationship between the management and staff of the Bodley Correctional Facility. Mr. William takes pride in being the platoon commander and flag bearer in the color party during military parades and state funerals. For 22 years of exemplary service to the Department of Corrections, Mr. Jim William is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Medal. <laughs> Mr. Cecil Jabatis. Mr. Cecil Jabatis began his career as a prison officer in 1999. In 2007, he was promoted to the rank of Correctional Officer 2, and in 2013, to his present position of Correctional Officer 3. He is a highly skilled individual who has mastered the art of self-defense and personal protection, owing to his training in control and restraint techniques, personal safety, and riot drills. His training with the International Practical Shooting Confederation has earned him a black badge and has contributed to his success at many shooting competitions. He is a founding member of the Special Operations Response Team with the responsibility for managing the movement of high-risk inmates. In 2005 and 2008, he received the director's commendation for his efforts and bravery in the recapturing of escaped prisoners. For 21 years of outstanding service to the Department of Corrections, Mr. Cecil Jabatis is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Medal. <laughs> The Public Services Long Service Award presented to Mr. Hubert Frederick George James for the St. Lucia Public Service. For long service to the St. Lucia Teaching Service, Mrs. Fatiana Charlery Nelson. For 49 years to the St. Lucia Teaching Service, Mrs. Arlette Anna Snack. For long service to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Superintendent Anastasius Mason.
Inspector Jane Norbert. For long service to the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, Ports Police, Inspector Michael Placid. Corporal Venetia Krishlu. For long service to the St. Lucia Fire and Emergency Services, Station Officer David Nelson. Retired Station Officer Aloysius Christoph Harrison Bailey. For long service to the St. Lucia Prison Service, Bodily Correctional Facility, Mr. Jim Anderson William. Mr. Cecil Jabatis. We have come to the end of a truly exciting ceremony, the annual St. Lucian Oscars, so to speak, except that it was not a ceremony where the honored competed for prizes and recognition. I believe that those awards mean a lot to the recipients, more than any other honor, I might add, because they are national awards given under the banner of the Order of St. Lucia and Public Services Long Service Awards. It is my sincere hope that the awards, as well as the recipients, will continue to inspire more of our people to give service in the many areas where it is required. Regardless how much we spend tack tackling problems, there will always be needs to be addressed, causes to champion, and issues to resolve. As such, we need an army of volunteers and service providers to satisfy those needs. So, 
As we bring the curtains down on this 2020 National Awards Ceremony, it is a fitting time to pay our respects to those who have made this event possible. First and foremost, our appreciation and thanks to Your Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack, Chancellor of the Order of St. Lucia and Lady Jurita Snack, for your kind hospitality and accommodation of this venue and your staff who worked behind the scenes in preparation for this prestigious occasion. We thank our Cabinet Secretary, Mr. Benjamin Emmanuel, for his critical input in the process, and our Prime Minister, Honorable Alan Chastney, for recommending the awardees to the Governor General. This year, we were again honored to have the pre presence of the President of the Senate, Mrs. Honorable Radas, Jen Jeanine Girodi McIntyre. We thank you, as well as Cabinet Minister, members of the Parliament of St. Lucia and the Diplomatic Corps for being here. The task of selecting persons to be honored falls under the purview of the National Awards Committee, headed by Chairperson Mrs. Mauricia Thomas Francis. It is never an easy task selecting some out of many. In fact, it is, more, it is a most unenviable task. So when we can present a truly fine group of award recipients as we have here this afternoon, we must say to the chairperson and her committee that they have done an excellent job in their selection and for that we are most grateful. Special thanks to Ms. Imam Lui, Secretary at the Office of the Prime Minister, for the tremendous secretarial support and assistance provided to the committee. We must thank our Royal St. Lucia Police Force for providing safety and managing our traffic, and the police band for the beautiful musical entertainment. Events Company of St. Lucia, <laughs> Events Company of St. Lucia for the setup that you see here this afternoon, the caterers who provided the refreshments that we will soon partake, the media and all those persons who in one way or another assisted in making this event a reality. All tasks were carried out with great efficiency and we are grateful. Finally, we thank our honorees, the stars of the moment. We can never stop thanking you for the service rendered that qualified you for those awards. We thank you and your company, family members, and friends who came to support you this afternoon. But all good things must come to an end. And so we conclude this ceremony with another generous round of thanks and best wishes to all. I thank you.